I love Richie FM. I love Richie FM. It's so hot. They gave me la la, came me hi hi. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Richie FM. It's hot. Here is rugby dance singer Toka. Love listening to Richie FM. Richie FM. It's hot. Richie FM is number one in Cuba. It's hot. Richie FM. Bon jolo jolo. In this bulletin, internal differences emerge in the Fiji Labour Party. Political parties lash out at Lysenian Garcia's comments on the Quran. And Fiji United Freedom Party supports a secular state. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. Internal differences seem to be the order of the day as the Fiji Labour Party tries to consolidate its party policies before the elections. Party leader Mahendra Chaudhry is adamant they support a secular state. This is in stark contradiction to the party president's position two weeks ago. Even though this is on record, Chaudhry refuses to believe the party president is against a secular state. With Shadalpa, we are going to form a coalition to form the next government. Two weeks ago, FBC News asked Lavinia Padaret her views on secularism at an FLP party rally in Narere Nasinu. We would like to respect the, that's what democracy is all about, the majority of views and we, as far as we are concerned, this country has more Christians, uh, a predominantly Christian country and uh, then if this is, you know, what they are merely saying and our view is what is wrong with the past, the 1997 constitution, where there was reference to God. Today, her leader Mahendra Chaudhary is opposing to this position, saying he'll now have to take it up with Padarat. I haven't heard her say that anywhere. And, and if you are maintaining that, I'll have to speak to her. I will not take your word for, uh, for gospel truth. I'll have to speak to her because uh, I know that our, our position on that is very clear. The Labour Party's position is very clear. Look at our manifesto. It's about secular state. It's about uh, religious freedom. It's about a united Fiji. And I think that's, that's the supposition. Straight after this interview, I received a phone call from Mrs. Padarat. She told me she did not mean what she said. She said this question was posed to her out of the blue. She said she was referring to the 1997 constitution. Because we believe that uh, there is only one God. We all serve this one God. We so, only worship in different ways. So, so in, 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 in a nutshell, Fiji Labour Party also supports Fiji being a Christian state? I would like to put it this way. If you go back to the old constitution, don't put words in my mouth. If you go back to the old constitution, what is wrong? Where? You know, the mention, it just ought to be stated that uh, Fiji should remain a God-fearing nation. It, is, if it, is, it doesn't need to have to mention secular state. Padarat's comments may stem from the fact that the Fiji Labour Party and Sodelpa are collision partners and Sodelpa is very much against a secular state. It is in fact calling for Fiji to be declared a Christian state. With Chaudhry officially now supporting Fiji becoming a secular state, we may soon see the internal differences extending to differences with its collision partners, which seems shaky 40 days before elections. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. And that's not the only trouble for the FLP. Former legal advisor Rajendra Chaudhry has been critical of the party and its candidates. His father and FLP leader Mahendra Chaudhry has brushed aside the matter. Rajendra Chaudhry has been in Australia since 2012. Recently, his Facebook page has been filled with criticism of the Fiji Labour Party. His question party candidate Dr. Rohit Kishore, Rajend Singh and FLP stalwart Arvind Dutt. Speaking on Fiji TV's talkback show, Out of the Box, Last night, Dr. Kishore says Rajen Chaudhary's comments are personally motivated. Let, let, let me put it straight. The, the story is like this. He wanted to come and contest the election. And you know that he's, you know, he's not allowed there. He has some right charges against him. And, and the leader just told him that, no, don't come, stay there. And that's why he's angry and he's having a go at all of us. Mm. So how do you plan to resolve this within the party? Well, we don't have a problem in the party. 
However, FBC News can confirm there are no rape charges against Rajendra Chaudhary. The charges were dropped after the complainant withdrew her complaint. Rajendra Chaudhary responded to questions from FBC News saying he never intended to contest under the FLP banner and his political aspirations haven't yet materialized. The party leader and father of Rajendra Chaudhary, Mahendra Chaudhary, has brushed aside the Facebook diatribes saying personal matters have no place in the party affairs. He's maligning your, your candidates. So what's happening? That is, that's got nothing to do with the issues in at hand. We don't get involved with social media, we don't get involved with personal differences. We know there'll be a lot of people wanting to exploit this sort of thing, but that's not going to uh, detract us from our focus. So these things don't matter. Rajendra Chaudhary also says his criticism of the FLP is to ensure transparency. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. The leader of Sadalpa has refused to comment on Lysini Ngarase's comments on equal citizenry. Lysini Ngarase said at a recent Sadalpa meeting that he believes God has given Fiji to only the Itauke people and not any other racial group. Vusita Kotewasawasa reports that many in the political arena have lashed out Ngarase, including coalition partners, the Fiji Labour Party. The Social Democratic Liberal Party has created a stir around Fiji with Laisen Yangarase uttering what can only be described as racist comments. Him and his party should, I think, should bow out now because they're bringing nothing but problem for us. This has brought into question the intentions of Sodalpa and its claims of being a multiracial party that's committed to serving all Fijians. Every political party should fight on development, what we can do for the people of Fiji. And that includes, most important of all, includes equal citizenry. Because I cannot provide development to only the Itauke, leaving the Rotumans on one side, the Rambe Islanders on one side, the, uh, the uh, indo fijian people on one side. It does not mean that you know we are going to make everyone black or everyone white. Uh, it is basically constitutionally or uh, as, as rights of people, it basically talks about equal access. The backlash has been widespread from every political party in Fiji. Even coalition partners, the Fiji Labour Party, have condemned Ngarase's statement. The country belongs to all its citizens. That's the position of the Fiji Labour Party, and that is accepted by all the people of Fiji. It does not matter who says what. We have lived here peacefully. We've had our moments of turbulence, but overall the people have lived peacefully, and that's the way Fiji will be. While Labour seems to be moving away from a coalition arrangement with Sodelpa, the NFP did not give a direct while Labour seems to be moving away from a collision arrangement with Sodelpa, the NFP did not give a direct answer and is being slightly more political guarded in its criticism of Ngarase. We believe that equal citizenry should also be translated into plans and policies and actions by government. However, Sodelpa candidate Nirmal Singh is the only one who is openly defending Ngarase's comments and the party stand on equal citizenry. Does every citizen in this country own land or have access to land? Do every citizen in this country have access to Goli Goli or own Goli Goli? Do every citizen, is this, uh, citizen in this country have access to natural resources of this country? No, we don't. So where are is equal citizenry? So Delpa leader Rote Mumukepa refused to make any comments and instead accused FBC News of not covering any Sodelpa political meetings. The irony is that FBC News covered the meeting at which Ngarase made the comments and had only called Rote Mumu to find out if she agreed with Ngarase. Vosita Kote Wasawasa, FBC News. The National Federation Party has condemned former Prime Minister Lysini Ngarase's statement against Fiji being a secular state. Party leader Biman Prasad spoke out while naming more candidates in Lautoka today. Akusita Tale has more.
Social Democratic Liberal Party member Laisi Niangarase has drawn criticism from across the political spectrum for saying that Fiji should recognize Christian values and that it's the prominent religion of the country. His latest comments talking about the Koran being used to form the ballot paper has only made things worse. We believe that Mr. Garase is fanning the flames of racial and religious hatred. This is racial bigotry. He thinks that those following Christianity, especially our youth OK, people can never be equal to others. We believe that Mr. Garase is opening old wounds and his comments are reminiscent of those dark days following the military coups of 1987. The party says this is an insult to each and every citizen and they will not tolerate any racism. This scenario must never be allowed to be repeated. And as one who led this country for over six years as Prime Minister, Mr. Garase should be the last person advocating religious supremacy in an effort to get votes for his party. Meanwhile, another two NFP candidates were named today. Lawyer Siddiq Faisal Koya and Semi Titoko will contest the elections under the NFP banner. It's great to see the look of uh, familiarity. Uh, people in the villages, the older gentlemen and ladies, they remember his dad. And uh, it's very easy to be reminded of him when they hear Mr. Koya speak. The NFP now has 45 candidates. Akosita Tale, FBC News. The Fiji United Freedom Party is supportive of Fiji being a secular state. Party President Jagat Karuna Ratne says everyone should have the freedom to follow any religion and that is reflected in the party's name. According to Karuna Ratne, they have a good support base in the rural areas. Well, that is a right in, 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 in its own effect and, and that, that gives the freedom for you to worship and do your religious activities the way you feel like and it is something that uh, that goes with the name of our party as well. The FUFP is based in Suva. After the break, Citizens Constitutional Forum investigated by FICAC. Gold FM is number one here in Sigatoka. Gold FM is our favorite radio station here in Lotoka. Gold FM is number one in Nen. I love listening to Gold FM in Ba. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits here in Suva. Hear about Hot of Cola, you immediately think of gold. I'm Josephine Sadi and I love hearing Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back, this is FBC News. The Court of Appeal will rule on notice on the appeal filed by Fiji Labour Party leader Mahendra Chaudhry. Chaudhry filed seven grounds of appeal against his conviction for breaches of the Exchange Control Act. The affidavit states High Court Judge Justice Paul Madigan erred in law and in fact. His lawyer Anand Singh also submitted that Justice Madigan failed to direct the assessors properly. Fiji First Party President Dr. Chiko Luveni says she has reported a nominee to their party leader after he was involved in a confrontation at a rally last month. Luveni says she understands a punch was thrown and swear words were uttered between nominee Nemani Bainivalu and a member of the public. Luveni told Radio New Zealand International she did not see the confrontation as she had her back to it when men and women separated for discussions. She says, if one understands the personalities and behavior of Itauke, such an incident can be brushed aside, especially between two men, and if it was to a woman, she would have reacted. Luveni says the party leader has addressed the issue and Bainivalu remains a nominee for Fiji First. It has been revealed that FICAC executed a search warrant at the Citizens Constitutional Forum office in Suva. It's understood the search was in relation to a CCF public conversation at USP last month about a research document called Discussion Paper on Free and Fair Elections. CCF Executive Director Reverend Aquila Yambaki says they've removed the discussion and the video of the entire event from their NGO website. He says CCF has complied with FICAC and gave full disclosure to the investigators. Yambaki has condemned allegations by the Fijian Elections Office that the CCF forum breached the electoral decree by publishing a research paper. 
CCF has also indefinitely postponed a forum that was to deal with separation of powers, the Bill of Rights and the transition process. About 140,000 residents living between Lautoka and Rakiraki will benefit from a new hospital in Bar. Akusita Tale was at the groundbreaking ceremony and filed this report. It's been a long time coming for these residents who've waited for better medical services for years. Cyrus Inaliva has lived in Bar all his life. He never thought a new hospital would be built in his lifetime. We normally go to in, for serious cases like this, we normally go to Lautaka and, and, and look at the, the hardship that the people of Bar face. Eh? Financially, getting transport, transportation for, for sick people right up to, to, to Lautaka. But now, it's only a step away. It's only a step away from our home. The new hospital will replace the current facility in Bar, which has lived well beyond its years and is expensive to maintain. It will be beginning of the realization of a dream that will come into reality and indeed with the people of Ba have been eagerly awaiting for. Work on the new hospital is progressing well and construction proper is expected to begin by November. There was a letter two weeks ago in letters to Edita stating that there is a big signboard and nothing happening. But I thank that gentleman for his concern. But now the reality is happening. Prime Minister Vorenge Benimarama was chief guest at the groundbreaking ceremony and says that about $30 million will be invested in this project while at the same time the Bar Health Center, Balevuto Health Center and Amau Nursing Station will receive some major upgrades. Akusita Talei, FBC News. And with that, it's sports now. Here's Jamie with the latest. Good evening. Last night, FBC Sports confirmed that coach Ben Ryan will not be able to travel with the Fiji 7 side to the Youth Olympic Games. And today, more problems plague the team with word that five players may also forfeit the tournament to feature in the Dean's final next weekend. Details after the break. Richie FM is number one in Singapore. I love Richie FM. It's so hot. They came a la la, me high high. Thank you, thank you, Tao Kwame. Mirchi FM is hot. Here at Rugby Town, Singatoka, love re listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM is number one in Suva. It's hot. Mirchi FM, bow chulum chulum. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Welcome back to FBC Sports. The Fiji Rugby Union says it can't change its theme for the Youth Olympics even if the selected five players from Ratu Kandavu Levu School don't, don't join the side. The players have not joined camp. Their school principal Benyamino Tawake has claimed in the media the students wanted to play in the Coke Zero Deans final next Saturday. RKS is scheduled to meet Lelin Memorial School in the Under-18 final. Fiji Under-18 manager Saleh Sorovaki says they will have to make do with the seven available players as the rules don't allow them to change the team. He adds they have spoken to Fasenok on the matter and the only way to change a team is if a player sustains an injury. The Fiji Under-18 leave on Monday for the Youth Olympics in China. Less than two months remain before the start of the 2014-2015 RB World 7 Series and Fiji coach Ben Ryan is hitting overdrive in preparations. Despite having a back injury, Ryan says he has to ensure all his plans are in place before the senior team marches into camp. Hinder Singh reports. The man at the helm of the Fiji 7 side says he's already drawn up his plans for the new season but has to wait to start his preparations. Pretty much every top player in Fiji 7s is abroad at the moment, either playing in Sri Lanka or in uh, Daveta for the World Club 7s in Limerick, so the top 40 are away. So when they come back uh, mid-August, we'll have training camp last week of August. However, the mentor has already decided on how he wants to go about dealing with his squad before naming his final team. Uh, we're hoping, I'm hoping to go to Ovalau actually to uh, take the team, play in a tournament over there. Um, and do some other community stuff there and then when we come back we'll name um, two, two teams one team that will play in the Foru um, tournament, Oceana Sevens and then one team that will then go to the Gold Coast While having lost Samisoni Viriviri and Benito Masilevu to club rugby in France Ryan wants to keep Donasio Ratamuri from joining the Exodus. For Donasio a full-time contract for Fiji Sevens um, he's currently in Sri Lanka 
Uh, I think from um, a contractual point of view, he may well have two contracts now, a French one and a Fijian one, um, you know, and uh, not sure about when the timings were for that. I'd like to see Donasio remain and stay and uh, carry on uh, his, uh, his outstanding play. Ryan has got it all planned out and penned out for the new season. After all, it's not only about the series, but finishing in top four to qualify for the 2016 Rio Olympics. Interesting, FBC Sports. The BLK Nadunga rugby side knows too well the precious semi-final matchups to bring to teams. This as the Stallions gear up to face Suva in the Skipper Cup semi-final on Saturday in front of its home fans. Nadunga being the only unbeaten team in round-robin competition says this will count for nothing in sudden death play. Interesting has more on the defending champions. Sweating it out under the sun as Nandronga players gear up for this Saturday's Skipper Cup semi-final. You can say that uh, the biggest uh, challenge is uh, when we take things for granted. Uh, we take things lightly, uh, thinking that uh, we can easily get away with, uh, with games. Uh, looking back at uh, the history of uh, this year and the competition, uh, having, you know, having uh, played uh, with, an, with an undefeated run. Uh, that is the challenge in itself. The Stallions are the darlings of the local scene and after having added the scalp of North Otago on Tuesday, will be riding high, or will they? All the teams that we've played in the round robins are, you know, when it comes to semi-final, it's a different ball game altogether. So that is, that is the challenge in itself. Nandronga and Suva have a rivalry from many years back, meaning the capital side will be treated with more caution than other teams. Suva is a very, very good team, uh, placed with uh, national reps. Compared to uh, Nandronga team, uh, in the current, they, are, they have the, the current form, uh, they have what it takes uh, in the forwards and also in the back line. And uh, this is what uh, I can say that's an up, uphill battle for Nandronga going into this uh, semi final. The players also can be assured of a further reward should they perform well enough and get noticed. Uh, I've enjoyed the Skipper Cup. There's been some boys, particularly for Nandroga and uh, Nandi, that have caught my eye that I'll be inviting into camp. So it's all about playing your heart out for your provinces, because a slip-up this weekend will mean the end of the Skipper Cup journey. Interesting, FBC Sports. The Fiji Under-18 hockey team is in the, final phase, in the final phase of its training before departing for the Youth Olympic Games in China. The young players were today busy tying up loose ends before they depart on Monday. Fiji has been drawn alongside Argentina, Netherlands, South Africa and Japan in the competition. The team has a mixture of old and new players and the coach is happy with the way they have gelled as a team. I, I just keep on uh, getting more and more confident as the days move on with uh, their attitude. I think in hockey one real big thing is attitude. These girls have come to camp with the right attitude. They've come to camp with the will to, to want to succeed. Eh? And sure, we know that the country is uh, relying on us to produce the results. Um, what is more important that we go out there and show them that Fiji is a country. You know, we're going there to make a mark. The Youth Olympics will be held from August 6th, uh, 16th rather, to the 28th. Despite not being in contention for the title, the Rio football team wants to win its remaining matches in the Fiji Sun Skipper Tuna National League. The fifth place team on the standing will meet Mba at Ratu Dagambao Park in Ausori on Sunday. Coach Marika Rondu says he's working on maintaining possession as this has been a downfall in recent matches. We, we, we do understand that uh, we're losing a lot of ball, especially on, uh, on, the, on the last third, and uh, we're trying to, to, to move around players uh, around the field so that uh, we are able to, to reduce this, uh, this wastage of uh, possession. And uh, we see that. Uh, We'll, we'll try and improve uh, in this game. You can catch a live commentary of the match on Radio Fiji 2 with the voice of football Raymond Stodart at 3 p.m. That is your sports for tonight. It's back to Jackie now with business. <laughs> Consumers have another money transfer outlet to visit in the heart of Suva City. Carpenters Finance, a division of Carpenters Fiji Limited, opened a new MH Money Express branch at MHCC Suva. The shop offers internal and external overseas remittances, and it also buys and sells foreign currency. General Manager MH Money Express, Alok Kumar Mishra, says they have been planning to launch the new outlet for over a year. The location is very prime and it's a landmark uh, shop for us. 
and we expect a lot of good business from uh, this place. The inward remittance in Fiji is increasing. It has increased by 16% from the uh, last year's uh, corresponding period uh, uh, data. So we expect to grab that business and now we have become super agent. So that gives us the added advantage. This is the ninth MH Money Express branch across the country. Trish is back and let's look at the weather. Thanks, Jackie. We're well, looking at today's map. It was cloudy in the morning for Suva and it later turned out to be a beautiful afternoon. It was, well, it was overcast and there were afternoon showers in Savu Savu. Lovely weather today in the other centers, Nandi, Lotokamba and Lambasa. Temperatures, Suva 28, Nandi, Lotokamba 29, Savu Savu 27 and Lambasa 31. Tomorrow's forecast, expect those cloudy clouds to remain over Suva and Savo Savo. Rest of the country can expect a fine day. You may need to bring out your umbrellas through if you are in the eastern parts of the country. Today's photo was taken by Sam Songo Yawa, a very own cameraman. And this was taken at the Outrigger Lagoon on the Coral Coast. That's beautiful. Thanks so much for that, Trish. Just a quick recap of our headlines. Internal differences emerge within the Fiji Labour Party. Political parties lash out at comments by Sudelpa member Lysinian Garase in relation to the Quran and equal citizenry. And Fiji United Freedom Party supports a secular state. Time now for our Fijian Speak segment. This is what some people had to say. I think Sodelpa. I think so Sodelpa will win the, this general election. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And to receive the latest headlines on your mobile phone, take subspace FBC to 777. That's all for tonight. I'll be back tomorrow. Till then, good evening. Richie FM is number one in Singapore. I love Richie FM, it's so hot. They came a la la, came a hi hi. Thank you, thank you, Tao Guam, eh? FM, it's hot. Here at Rugby Town, Singapore, I love listening to Mitchi FM. Mitchi FM, it's hot. Mitchi FM is number one in Suva. It's hot. Mitchi FM, bo chulu chulu. Mitchi FM, it's hot.